Hello and welcome to Inside the Women of Denver, where we talk to local leaders about their successes, failures, and lessons learned on the journey to success. I'm Crystal Covington and I'm here with Karen Seitz, a motivational woman who helps those living with unresolved issues from divorce, breakup, and past relationships get the transformation they need to finally heal. When I first met Karen at a networking event, I was instantly attracted to her warm and comforting spirit, empathetic heart, and ability to truly connect with others deeply in a short time. That means me. <laughs> I am so excited to spread the love by having her on our show today. Karen, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to be sitting next, with you, next to you on this show. And first off, um, you clearly have a superpower, so I wanna talk about that. <laughs> Please tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> it is your ability to connect with people at a deeply human level and make us all drop our defenses and mm -hmm. just kind of pour out our souls vulnerably. How do you do that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Were you born with it or did you start developing this over time? Is it something no. you intentionally created? <laughs> it was something I had to intentionally create. Okay. Um, and the way that I get there and continue to get there is by connecting to myself. Mm. So I've found that I can't really connect with others authentically if I'm not connected into who I am and being honest about myself and allowing others the chance to be honest about who they are. Wow. Yeah. So how do you get that? I mean, that's a deep thing that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> how do you get that sort of self-acceptance? I mean, what if you don't accept yourself? How do you get to that point where you can so that you can talk with other other people and, and give them that ability to be vulnerable. Well, I think a lot of it comes from realizing that I don't have to be perfect. That for me, connection is about being real. So it's sharing my humanness and sharing what I've learned along the way and being vulnerable. Um, and for so long, I made my journey and how I connected with people, um, even my business, about being perfect. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to have the hard feelings. I wanted to just do positive thinking and create a visualization and just be this perfect person. Yeah. And then not too long ago, um, through doing the work that I do with clients and myself, um, I realized that connecting is really about being real. So I try to remember that and I don't always remember that. <laughs> yeah. That's part of the being real part and not being perfect. I'm gonna fall down, I'm gonna mess up. And when I do that, that's where I learn and that's where I grow. So I have to continuously remind myself and remind others that I work with that that's the point. Get in there and get dirty and fall down and get bruised because that's where the healing takes place. Yeah. So you talked about doing the work that you do with your clients mm -hmm. now on yourself. Was that how you got your start? Um, well, my business started, um, or my path of working with others um, with healing, started in energy medicine and intuitive healing. Mm -hmm. And then about a year ago, I found this incredible modality called the healthy grieving process. And for me, on my own journey for healing, I was constantly looking for everything outside of me to give me answers about who I was, mm -hmm. uh, what I should be doing, when I should be doing it, um, how I should be doing it. And I never looked within. And so when I found the healthy grieving process, it was the first modality that flipped the mirror around to me yeah. and taught me that I have all of my answers and all of the tools I need within myself. And this modality teaches me how to do that. And so once I found this modality and it was kind of just second nature to me, yeah. um, I flipped my whole practice and just started doing this work because it was so effective for me in my own life and I wanted to have, I always wanted to have a tool that was that effective for my clients. Mm -hmm. And before with the work I was doing, it was great and it has its place, but it wasn't authentically me. And for okay. others, it is authentically them. And I always felt like I was performing and like I always had to have the answers for uh -huh. my clients because that's what they came for. And so when I discovered that I have my answers inside of myself and that it's not um, healing for me to look outside of myself, then I had to flip my practice because yeah. I was like, well, what am I doing having clients come to me for answers when I know that they can find them themselves and I want to guide them to that place. 
So what was your previous practice? Uh, I did energy medicine and oh, I'm sorry, you did. You, yeah, you said, okay, so energy <laughs> medicine and intuitive healing. I think I didn't process that. No problem. <laughs> it happens. That's part of being real. Yeah. <laughs> I really didn't process that. Being very authentic right now. Yes. <laughs> That's what it's about. <laughs> yeah. So you just seem so passionate about what you do and you care so much about the people that you support. And that just drives me to want to know, I, I mean, I want to know more. I want to know, you know, exactly how do you do this? Where do you find your customers? You know, who are the main people that are, are in need and, and need to be supported by you? Mm -hmm. um, well, I think that as a society as a whole, we all need to turn that point where we look inside ourselves and change ourselves first so that we can see change out here in the external world. I really do, external world begins to change and shift as you shift your internal world. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone can benefit from this work, but my focus is in working with women who are stuck in unresolved issues from a divorce, breakup, or past relationship. Yeah. Because to me, when we go through a huge loss like that, um, we often feel like we don't know who we are anymore without that person. Um, and we can get really stuck in that place of our pain and of our grief. And if there's anything that I've learned from doing this work for myself is that those experiences in life are the biggest catalyst for us to create change and reclaim who we are and find out um, what makes us tick and how to re-engage with the world in a self-empowered way. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, um, you know, someone that, let's say there's someone that's watching, they feel like they're going through the kind of things that you're talking about. What would be your first piece of advice mm. for them in just getting to a place where they can even accept support? Yeah. I think the first place, and I won't, don't want to say an easy place to go, but a good first step is to realize that the grief and the pain that you're experiencing is normal. So often in life, um, we tend to traumatize our losses or make them these huge tragedies, and they are really hard, but they're also normal. Loss and grief are a part of life. Again, as I was saying earlier, those are some of the catalysts in our life that really get change going yeah. and there's so many gifts and losses that we go through in life and so I would say that first first step is just knowing where you're at is okay and that it's normal and that if you want to you can step into a place of looking for the gifts and just accepting where you're at and knowing that you can get through to the other side. Wow that was so powerful. Thanks. I feel like I should give you applause. <laughs> That was it. great. <laughs> um, so I want to switch gears a little bit okay. and talk about your business life. Okay. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to be watching this that are interested in becoming entrepreneurs that mm -hmm. want to grow in their own personal business life, get into coaching or get into you know some different form of of, of making their making their income mm -hmm. besides going to work. Yep. So how did you get inspired <laughs> to do that? What was the first step that you took to get yourself I mean, I feel like the first step is probably even just saying, okay, I want to do this. Yeah. What was your first step of, okay, I want to do this and I'm going to investigate it? So I think the first step was actually, I saw a friend of mine was opening up a healing center. And at the time I was already, this is back before I started practicing what I do now. And um, I had been learning energy medicine. I went to school for integrative healthcare at Metro. and saw this old friend of mine was starting a healing center and I just kind of something lit up inside of me and I was like I'm gonna reach out to her about renting space and just see what happens oh, and wow. just kind of dove in <laughs> so that was my first step Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I was in school I wasn't sure what I was gonna do when oh, I got out Oh, so you were fresh yeah okay oh, oh. so new oh so new <laughs> yeah. you hadn't even gotten into the you know the 
money trap yet, the, you know, <laughs> the cycle, as they say, or the rat race. You yeah. skipped the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was um, waiting tables and bartending uh, at the time. That was my, my old career. I'm retired now. <laughs> oh, wow. Retired bartender. Retired bartender. On the floor. Uh, it can happen, <laughs> I promise. Um, and I knew that that was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my <laughs> life. And I had a call to help other people and to work with others. Um, and so much of that started out just on my own path of working with myself and realizing we need this stuff. Nice. So how would you build your clientele in the beginning? Well, in the beginning, so the work I do now has actually really helped me in my business because now I can see the places that I just kind of skimmed over and started oh. coasting mm -hmm. before. So um, I didn't actually, if I'm being honest, I didn't do a whole lot in the beginning to get clients. Yeah. I, like as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> I did a lot of positive thinking, um, just thinking that if I put a website up, the people are gonna come oh, yeah. and there's gonna be knocking down the doors <laughs> and it's gonna be crazy and it didn't happen like that at all. <laughs> yeah. So I really think just recently in the past year when I got really clear and really focused about myself and then kind of found my calling of what I really wanted to do with people, leading them to themselves, then I was I'm starting to be able to figure out that my business isn't just about working with clients, that I'm also a businesswoman and there's so much more that goes into it than I ever really wanted to know before I started. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you told that story. I've had a lot of people, I used to do a lot of marketing, I still do a lot of marketing for people, but I would make somebody a website or even a flyer, you know, you design somebody a flyer and then they go, okay, I'm gonna make lots of money now. <laughs> Thank you for this amazing flyer. <laughs> It is, it's so what it's like. <laughs> you're like, wait, wait, wait. I don't want you to leave feeling like you're gonna get rich if you take this flyer. Yeah. I, I don't want you to not come back because they're gonna go, oh, it's her fault. Yeah. If she had done a better flyer, I'd be making more money right so, now. <laughs> right? No, and I find now that for me, it's really comes down to time management. It comes down to doing um, what I'm trying to learn and stepping into is doing the things that are gonna bring the most impact or put the most impact out there. So I have to get out of my comfort zone. I have to reach out to people and make calls and do things like this <laughs> that get me you know, out of what I'm used to so I can really see what my potential is and do my business for me. Yes, I wanna help other people, but having your own business is like a 24 hour personal growth workshop. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I didn't want to know that before either. <laughs> I just thought it was going to just be this easy yeah. sailing thing and not so much. <laughs> so what's been one of those biggest lessons for you? Um, that one of the biggest lessons that I'm currently really learning is that when I fall down or lose that commitment to myself and my business, because it is hard, you have to wake up every day and be committed and be motivated just through yourself. So one of the biggest lessons I'm learning is that it's okay when I fall off or I don't do the things I need to do mm -hmm. because then I get to look at, well, why don't I wanna do those things and what's going on with me that I need to look at so I can step out more fully. Yeah. Um, so I'm really learning what I preach about being real and not being perfect and so that flows right into my business as well. And it's how I get to connect with other entrepreneurs and, and business owners, um, is that it's not always a perfect ride. Yeah. Yeah. So what are some of the things, practices that you do consistently that keep you on track and keep you, you know, getting to, as my husband always calls them, the leading measures mm -hmm. that, you know, the things that you do that lead up to that thing that you're trying to achieve? Yeah, um, checking in with people, mm -hmm. asking for help, um, having people that help keep you accountable. Um, so my friend and I, who is also um, an entrepreneur and a therapist, um, we just set up our accountability meetings today. Oh, so awesome. I think that's going to be really, really helpful um, to have that on more of a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. But I would say the biggest practice that I use is asking for help 
when I need it and using the support around me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big lesson for it a is. lot of people. Because <laughs> you kind of want to do it all yourself. Yeah. Like, at least I do. That's kind of who I am. I'm like, I'm going to do it all myself and, you know, not ask for any help. And I'm really learning, you know, help is a good thing because I need that outside perspective yeah. um, and feedback on where I'm, I'm maybe not committing as much as I could or where I could be doing things better or even hearing where I'm doing things well and yeah. what's going right that people can see from the outside. Yeah, that feedback is just so valuable. You can't make changes and adjustments. You know, you're trying to, it's just like driving a car. You have to kind of keep, you know, <laughs> moving a little bit left to right to maintain yeah. that straight line. But you you have to have feedback mm -hmm. in order to know, do you need to move left or right? Because it's like having blinders on yeah, when you have your own business. Yeah, it definitely can be. Yeah. <laughs> well, I love it. Is there any one thing that you just want to make sure people know about you mm. or about grief? Um, what is the last lesson that you want to leave our, our audience with? One thing that comes up, um, it's part of my tagline with my business, is to release your story and reclaim your life. And what that means to me and what I've had to see is that you have to get out of your story um, of how you think things are and really look at yourself as how you really are and that's how you let go of the things that are holding you back so that could be in your business that could be with grief um, or anywhere that you're stuck in life see where you might be telling the story of how things are and see where you can actually be honest with yourself and take ownership of who you are and then bring that person out into your life beautiful thank you so much karen you're welcome thank you for having me <laughs> Well, thank you for watching Inside the Women of Denver with me, Crystal Covington, and our guest, Karen Seitz. I am so excited that I got to spend time with you today, and I want you to remember that you deserve to be seen, heard, and known. I'll see you again soon.